Okay, you click the thumbnail, you know what this is about, but I gotta edit in a preamble because there's still some questions coming out of the smartest, most handsomest, bestest comment section of all of the internet. Some fucking proper brainiacs down in the doobly-doo and also some proper fucking dullards down in the doobly-doo. So we're gonna address both of those. All in good fun, mind. You know, there's certain fellas you can sit and have a banter with in the pub, have a, enjoy a beer. And there's other fellas you'd rather they just stayed at home. First and foremost, this is about a fellow YouTuber named a Bourbon Moth, lying for the sake of selling garbage receptacles. I know it doesn't make a sense to you and I. However, that filthy, filthy lucre, sweet, sweet affiliate link money, he set up to do a oil-soaked rag self-ignition or no spontaneous combustion test and nothing happened after six and a half hours so he went ahead and threw in some zip lighter briquettes and lit them on fire in order to get a result so that he could please his sponsor and sell lots of garbage receptacles now he's flopping around in the boat like a halibut fresh off the bottom so we're just going to go ahead and take a fish bonker and finish this off once and for all because you're judged by the caliber of your enemies and this guy he's not my enemy but I do want to point out bullshit when I do see it because it's utter fucking bullshit and it demeans us all you will recognize that when you're wrestling a grease pig you stop to take a breath the sun is hot you're tired full of pig shit and you look over at the pig and you realize he's kind of enjoying it. <laughs> well, partner, once I'm a dog with a boner, this, this shit is fun for me. So we fire up the mystery machine and jump in with Thelma and Srooby Dooby Doo and go and find some clues because nerding out is fun. I want to call your attention to numerous auto ignition rag vigeos. You'll note that what we're into is thermal runaway precipitated by smoke. And what you do not see in those vajayos, because most of them are outside and most of them are, there's no one around when it happens, is that one of the most toxic things, and this came out of the doobly-doo, thank you very kindly, linoleic acid, linseed oil, linoleum, a plastic, right? Linoleic acid breaks down into acroline, acrid, it's right there in the name. Acroline is a chemical. It's so bloody toxic, it was used in the First World War as gas. The French used to put it in shells and use it as a biological weapon. It's that toxic. 10 ppm will kill everything in water. It's highly toxic. In addition, it's the most carcinogenic element of smoke and cigarettes. It's 40 times more carcinogenic than hydrogen cyanide. When the vegetarians get all up in arm about raunchy Ron's frying his french fries in tallow, I don't know if you're that worried about it why you'd be eating at raunchy Ron's anyway, but that's neither here nor there. And they switched to industrial seed oil. It was off-gassing acroline to such an extent that OSHA had to step in and set a daily threshold limit value. And that value, because the, the, they didn't want to give the poor fry station workers death, they had to set that over an eight hour shift at 0 0.1 parts per million. So we know his experiment was fraudulent. We know what his motivation was. All he needed to do was just call it a demonstration. This is what could happen, not this is fact, this happened, because you cannot sit in an enclosed space with a chemical weapon gas off-gassing off of a multitudinous array of samples. You ever played checkers in a Turkish prison, Billy? Black before red. Black smoke before red fire. Look at the other demonstrations all over the place. Roiling smoke. And prior to that smoke, toxic off-gassing. 
It is physically impossible to be in a contained space with this chemical warfare agent. It causes pulmonary embolisms, no, not pulmonary embolisms, pulmonary edemas. And <laughs> Sorry about that, I got my medical nomenclature all mixed up, tongue tangulated. And it also causes blistering, rashes, burns, chemical burns on your skin. You mean to tell me you're going to sit in an enclosed shop for 12 hours watching Sheenfeld episodes beside an off-gassing chemical warfare factory. You gotta be, in, <laughs> in the words of Bismarck Key, man, quit lying. Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today we're gonna reenact the infamous Seinfeld, not Jewish lightning, but Japanese lightning. That's where your mortgage and your affiliate links rub together <laughs> in order to create a friction fire. I don't begrudge this guy making a mistake, but doubling down, not the way to go. Especially not when you're dealing with the likes of the Brainiacs uh, in the comment section on this channel. So many things have been brought to my attention and we will review them. And you can decide for yourself whether the guy is fucking goof or uh, just, well, yeah. There's, there's only one way to go on this one. In the first, my hypothesis that lighter fluid was used as an accelerant is incorrect. A nice quick edit there. And we can see this flickering flame just in the one location, nice and tall, nice and tall. And then in another location, like it went to another side and then another side. And that is actually, has been pointed out to me, that's one of them zip lighter briquettes. That is that guy right there. But it starts on one side and goes to another side and kind of separates out and goes to another side. At one point you can see a triple header of that perfect flame. And that explains the angle that this is taken at so you cannot see into the burn barrels and also why he lets it chooch for so long so that by the time he gets there, you can no longer see the fire starter. This is the Seinfeld episode, Immaculate Combustion. Interesting angle. And I think it's a quick edit. Or maybe not. No smoke at all. Oh, and there we go. Oh, and that's that perfect, beautiful fire starter flickering away at the very tippy top of the barrel. Now he has to wait a goodly amount of time prior to coming in with the other camera angle because he'd be able to see, or we would be able to see rather, what he's up to. It's fully engulfed. Now, if this were in fire in your shop, would you let it go this long? No, obviously not. But the fact of the matter is he has to let it go that long so that the fire starter burns out. No sooner does he get it outside, but he comes back and does another commercial for Just Right Oil Waste Can. Remember kids, you must empty these every night. What the fuck's the point of that, I ask you? Now this is, yeah. You're gonna shake your head at this. Oh, 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 what is this? What's this guy right here? Oh, it's the zip, the package, the flat pack of zip fire starters. Interesting. Why that would be surreptitiously hidden away on the floor there, right by the experiment. Your guess is as good as mine. Biblically speaking, you judge the tree by its fruit. So you can see the man by his works and the servile, needless, and incessant little lies. I'm not proud of this, but when this one caught fire, I was right in the middle of an episode of Seinfeld. So I wouldn't be proud of that either. Attention. 
Luckily, once the flames got a little bigger, it was pretty hard not to notice. What? <laughs> what? Oh, so crazy. It, oh boy. Gets too crazy. Directly in his field of view is the experiment. And on his screen, he's not watching Seinfeld. What a stupid lie. Why? He's watching the news. That's a weather broadcast. Watching Seinfeld. <clears throat> Overlooking the field of battle, mind. Oh, and I couldn't, I didn't see anything because I was, wasn't paying. You, you're looking right at it. <laughs> Furthermore, you can't sit in a shop. What's got phenols? Now, here's a skookum young fella, Link in the doobly doo, at the behest of pegged uh, slave leg oil bird, a motherfucker. Tried to catch me in a snatch 23. Look at the smoke roiling off of those linseed oil soaked rags. Look at it. Now, I'm not a one to cast aspersions, mind you. However, he strikes me, and we'll see here momentarily. Holy oh fuck, that's a long one. Stick with him. Stick with him. The thing is about smoke. Whoa, there we go. You see how that come up? Nothing like starting it with a zip lighter. And also the smoke roiling off of there. You can't even be in the shop. He's long gone to bed being a young fella and needing his beauty rest. But how oh, I don't want to cast aspersions here. But this fella bears a striking resplendence to the Hyundai Hashish Hotbox champion of Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, Manitoba. I apologize, all you Flatlanders look alike to me. Handsome devil he is. I can say that as a boring white guy with a misspent youth. But look at him. <laughs> he's just about bleeding. At least he's prepared. What's it gonna take for me to get you into a brand new garbage receptacle today? Am I going to have to discount your affiliate link? Huh? <laughs> NAFTA. NAFTA. Camping gas. A whole gallon of it. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't be surreptitiously hiding that behind boxes in my empty boxes in my wood shop during a flame test. <laughs> Coleman. White gas. I walked out, and what did I find out here? But our experiment from before reignited. And we'll sum everything up with a fun little continuity error. Here's the Rockler catalog. Going into bin number the six. That's where it lies. That's the page. It's going in there. Uh, there's another one what goes in there. Next is the page what goes in number five, if I'm not mistaken. It's interesting that he didn't number the actual receptacles. All the better to switch a you with. Those zip lighter briquettes are highly effective at starting spontaneous combustion. <laughs> Fuck. Unbelievable. What I'm showing you is when he goes to pick this up. Eh? Oh, we don't need to see that. It's not the same pail. It's been swapped. Look at the catalog cut pages. Look at that zip lighter fly. Oh. There we go. Completely different pages. It's got a little red burn on it. And it says collection. Where are we? Where are we? Collection. Not even the right pages. You can't believe everything on the internet and so forth. But that's also bullshit because somebody's going to take this and run with it in order to outlaw tongue oil and linseed oil. Or you, gotta go or you can only be a corporation or you have to have additional insurance. This 
kind of thing, it ain't good. And we got to call it out. When you see bullshit, call it out as bullshit. Because even if you think it's harmless, it's not. Because some nervous Nelly is going to get in a position of power and say, we need out. Hey, can you buy a lead hammer? Now, I do machining. I need a lead hammer. You can't buy the Jesus thing because somebody thinks you're going to eat it. <laughs> this is exactly that. They're going to outlaw linseed oil because they think it conflagrates spontaneous like. And it don't. You got to be careful. But as long as you're careful, everything's going to be okay. As a point of order, I invite you to think about this. Or don't, as is your want. Imagine if we all thought the same thing, how boring the world would be because we are so very often wrong. As uh, St. Augustine of Hippo's apocryphal chestnut tells us, truth is a lion and there's no need to defend the truth. You let it loose and it will defend itself. So we're letting loose the lion of truth and that cunning linguist of all time, Willie Shakesnake, said, Methinks the lady doth protest too much. That's right. A lie needs to be vigorously defended. But the truth, the truth, quietly just is. Truth the first, auto-ignited oily rag fires. Smoke like your mother-in-law on a Chardonnay bender. She just, she just can't get enough of them menthol cigarettes. Truth the second, at low temperature, we're talking 100 degrees Celsius, the phenols coming off of those oily rags are so utterly toxic that you cannot be in the same room. They are choking, eye-scratchingly horrific.